Hi, welcome to my first ever vlog. Ah, Happy New Year. My plan is, is our kiss campaign, I'm going to vlog them. Oh, that might be scary. This week, because next week is there's an Indian festival, as part of the Hindi festival, Maka Sakranti. I do apologise if that is extremely badly pronounced. Sakranti means to go from one place to another. It also means one meets another. This is the time when the sun changes direction from one constellation of the zodiac to another and is known as Sankranti. So, in honour of this, I'm going to make Indian street food, dosa. Dosa's a pancake, a savoury pancake. I could cheat and use ground flour and rice flour, but upon Googling it, I found a few recipes that do it the traditional way, so I thought we'd have a go with the traditional way. To start, need to soak 400 grams of short grain rice. I used sushi rice for this recipe. Soak it in 800 ml of cold water. This is 100 gram of black bean dal or oil dal and added to it is a teaspoon of fenugreek seeds. Soak them overnight in two separate bowls. To start we have to now break down both the mixes separately into a paste to use. So I'm going to chuck it in the food mixer. Give a smooth paste. Here's hoping. Right, let's see how we're going. This has been running for about six, seven minutes now. All I can think of is those poor ladies that grind this by hand without the advance of a Kenwood food processor. Right, it still feels a little, you can see a little bit gritty still. So I'm going to give it another couple of minutes to just make sure it's as smooth as it can be. Okay, it's been about another three minutes. I have to say this is not quite the consistency I was expecting, but hey-ho, I don't think the rice is going to grind down anymore. So I'm going to go with it because I live on the edge like that. So let's get that into another bowl. If you bear a second. And then we're going to put the lentils in. Oh, do you know what? It's quite smooth. It's not too gritty. Maybe what would have been better would be to add the water bit by bit to build it up into a paste. But we'll see. Right, there's no point in cleaning that because it's going straight in again. And this is the lentil and fenugreek mix now. do exactly the same that but I'm going to add just a little bit of water at a time just in case that makes a blind bit of difference who knows okay well that's interesting right let's mix it around a bit and I'm going to add a little bit more water to it give it another whisk. So at the moment I've added about 100 ml of water. The recipe does sort of say for 200 but we'll see. I'm just going to add the rest of the water. It's looking quite good in there. Obviously that grinds easier than rice, funny enough. That's nice and bubbly. Quite bitty. I guess again it's the skins of the Euro dal so I'm gonna beat it for the same amount of time, about 10 minutes as per the recipe. Okay let's see what it's doing now. Okay it's quite thick actually, quite bubbly too. Oh how exciting. Right and now I think that's mixed enough I am gonna add the rice flour mix, rice flour, the rice mix back into it because it says the recipe says to beat it together I'm too lazy to whisk, I'm going to chuck it back in the food mixer. I think that is well and truly mixed. The recipe says a medium to thick batter, so I reckon that's perfect. I hope after all this it tastes nice. The whole point, or the difference between this and making a pancake, 
is it's supposed to have a slightly sour texture a taste because what you do now is you now leave it to ferment so you cover it and leave it for about eight hours so I'm gonna leave it overnight and let's see what happens tomorrow get my muslin cloth and cover morning right so the DOS is fermented this is what it looks like now how exciting so we'll come back to that in a minute so I'm going to make the filling so I'm going to just leave that out for a second while I make the filling just over 500 grams of potatoes raw so that cooks down to about 500 cooked as you can see the steams coming off it you don't want to mash you don't want to cook it until it's too mashable you want to cook it so it's still quite firm because we're going to fork them to mash them I personally like it like this so it's a bit lumpy I don't like creamy mash if that makes sense not in Indian food. Right, so I'm chopping 300 grams of onion and you need to cook these until they're translucent. So if you're organised, you get them on the same time as the potatoes. Okay, let's cook that till they're translucent. I'll leave them for a little while. Meanwhile, I should chop the chilli. Right, the recipe calls for about three quarters of a chilli. Now, my grown ghost this morning gave me the longest chilli in the world. Obviously, I'm not going to use three quarters of that because it'll be too hot. I'm going to go for about that much. And let's see how we go. Right, I will come back when the onions are ready to go. See you in a minute. Okay, so the onions are quite soft now. Some are a little overdone, but it won't matter at all. So to the onions, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of turmeric, one and a half teaspoons of cumin, and three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to fry the spices just a little bit. While that's gently frying, I've got the pan down turned really low so the onions don't burn. I'm going to chop my chilli and add garlic to it as well. So just small enough pieces so it doesn't blow your head off you don't bite a whole chili we'll see how hot this one is when I eat it, it could be um, a bit mind-blowing but we'll wipe that out later there's always yogurt right to add to my onions add some garlic okay that's about three cloves of garlic I like garlic so they might be a bit huge cloves relatively and I'm going to add to that in a minute these and fry them off. Smells amazing. Right, frozen peas. I've got petty pois because I don't like big peas. It's a personal thing. I don't really like peas at all, but in Indian food they don't actually taste that bad. And to that, I'm going to add my pre-cooked potatoes. And when I, after I put them in, I'm just going to mash them up with a fork, so they're still quite lumpy. So they're quite hard still, but that's good because you get nice lumps of potato. Then, when this is done, I'm going to add the chilli and I'm going to leave it to fry gently. And while that's frying, I'll make the pancakes up exciting. Right, give that a real good stir. Okay, add the chilies. It just needs to heat that completely through now. And the last thing we'll add once it's heated is the fresh coriander. I'll do that in a second once it's heated through. Right, now let's see what this looks like. Okay, so it's, it looks like it's almost set. Oh, wow. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to thin it a bit because I think that might be just a little bit too thick. What I forgot to mention was actually this recipe, which is a bonus, is free of all the notifiable allergens, which is good for everybody. 
the, the recipe calls for it to be medium thick but I think it's just a little bit too thick so I'm going to add just a little bit of water just to thin it down a little bit only because I personally don't like thick fast better thick pancakes I think um, the thinner you can get a pancake the better personally it's, it's a bit sticky around the edge it smells nice right let's go let's pour a ladle into the frying pan I've got some oil heating up here so it should be hot let's go for it oh it's exciting I have no idea what this is going to turn out like let's see now why is that not sizzling See, I still think it's a little bit too thick, but we'll see. Okay, it's actually... be interested to know how much this mix makes, because it's not. I'm going to spread it out. Ah, okay. Should put down a crepery thing. It's quite thick. I guess like normal pancakes, the first one is always a bit near. That's a technical term, technical cooking term, bit near. And then it as you make them i.e. you get more skilled, what's interesting is all the air bubbles we can zoom in on the air bubbles there see? certainly sizzling I think maybe the oil wasn't hot enough to start with but it'll be right for the second one there's air a very Indian smell to it, but whether it's the uh, fenugreek, I've never eaten, obviously being a celiac for all this time, I've never actually eaten normal dosses, so fingers crossed, it's quite, it's quite breaking up a little bit. It smells lovely. <laughs> Sorry, that's the cameraman getting excited about his lunch. I am going to thin it down a little bit more actually, I think. I think this is just a little bit too thick. It's actually quite tacky, you see it's sticking to the... It's interesting. Life is an experiment. Oh, it's starting to... Right, let's flick it, see what happens. Okay. Right, so I'm going to lay out the pancakes on a bit of kitchen roll while I make the rest. They're quite um, crispy, which is how they're supposed to be, according to the recipe. So let's try the next one. And we'll, hopefully now I've um, started, it will um, speed it up. quite a thick batter compared to pancakes. So I still don't know whether it would be better thinned personally. I'll just scrape it that way. Right, and then the advantage of this, I know it seemed a bit of a faff to make it to start with, but this can now be stored for up to a week in your fridge. So now you've made the batter, you can literally just chuck it in your fridge and when you want a dosser or do so, you can just eat it. it smells amazing in this kitchen. I wish we had smell of vision. Oh, look at that. See, that's more like I expected it to be. Okay. Still very tacky, though. 
Next week I'm going to try it with pudding rice rather than sushi rice and see if it makes a difference to the consistency of the pancake. And also it gets, means I get to eat this again which is lovely. I'm just going to let them cook. So if I cook a couple up and then we'll plate it and see what it looks like. Watch this space. Look, the third doser. Now I've got the hang of it, dealing with such a viscous batter. It's actually looking really cool. It's just slight, starting to turn underneath, so I'm just going to leave it just for another couple of seconds. Shows the thickness. See, I, it's quite thin. It's curled at the edges, so you can't really see. But you'll see it more when we um, put it out. There you go. It smells awesome. So I'm just patting it down to ensure it cooks evenly. I'm going to give it, because they should be quite crispy, so I'm going to give it just another couple more minutes. Because in areas where it's a little bit thicker, it's not as crispy, so it won't be as cooked. It does keep sticking though, it's quite tacky. Do you know, it's starting to puff up a little bit like pita bread does, look. See the air in there? I think we're nearly. Well, I reckon we should rock and roll. We've got two because I'm now hungry. We're going to go and try it. They're obviously not greasy anymore, but while I add the coriander to the spicy potato mix, right, so this can be covered, stored in the fridge for seven days. Guess what my kids are getting to eat for the next week. Right, to my potato and pea mix. Nice, all the lovely colours. So I'm now going to chuck the coriander in there. Nice generous serving of coriander. Can't have too much coriander in my opinion. Just give it a good stir. Piping hot, lovely. Right, let's make this up. Put the lid on there to keep that hot. Where's my fish slice gone? Okay. It's a little bit tackier. But how quick would that be? You could store it in the fridge and you can have an Indian pancake within what? Two, three minutes it took me to make that. I need a spoon. What I'm guessing, you literally fold it in half like a pancake. We've got some natural yogurt to go with it. Obviously you can, if you have a client that's dairy free or you're dairy free, depending on who you're making this for. You can serve it with dairy free yoghurt. Me personally, I'm not dairy free, so I'm going to try it with some natural yoghurt on the side just to dip in. This looks lovely. Okay, nice generous filling. Might try this with a meat one as well, actually, to see whether it comes better with meat. Right then I guess I'm trying to flip it over so it's half the pancake. Look at that. Okay. Let's try it with a bit of yogurt. Knife and fork. Shall I be first? Yeah, go on. A little bit of yogurt. I hope I don't spill it down me. I like it. <laughs> 
I think it's lovely. The pancake's a bit, a bit tacky, a little bit tacky. So I'm going to try the pudding rice next week. See if it makes a difference to the texture of the pancake. It's lovely. Bon appetit. Here's me about to eat my lunch. Do you want to see what it looks like inside? Look at that. Gorgeous.